Good morning, everybody. Um, I missed last week's video. Uh, life is a little hectic, so I guess I'm struggling with what really to make. And I find based on a lot of my views, people really just love a cylinder. Uh, I've been touching, teaching a lot of beginners lately, and I realized that it really is. It's the basis of everything that you do. And once you can really fight the wheel's will to make a bowl or a plate, then you're gonna have a much better chance making a cylinder. So I'm gonna just review um, a basic cylinder. This is about three and a half pounds of clay. I'm gonna go ahead and get that started. So um, in many of my other reference uh, videos, I've referenced Grimace a lot. And a lot of people may not have known who Grimace is, but guess what, it's been Grimace's birthday. So now people know who Grimace is. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this shape right here. I'm going to start with our wheel going um, about medium speed. I just want to put a little bit of pressure up on the top, but I want to balance it with my back hand here. That's going to stop the clay from going all wherever it wants as I'm pushing down on the top. Now I'm going to start to speed it up. I'm going to push down to make it stick. Remember that my left elbow is locked into my hip bone. Um, you guys might have heard my story before, but when I first started doing this 30 years ago, I was all of 90 pounds. So it has nothing to do with strength. It's all about leverage. Um, I worked at a golf course for 10 years. I was a beer chick in Queens, New York. And uh, I watched plenty of small children hit golf balls 300 yards. Um, so it's all about leverage. So what I do is I lock my left elbow right into my belly, right above my pelvis bone. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push with the heel of my hand, which is actually my wrist, and I've created a tension rod between the heel of my hand and my belly. That's gonna allow my entire body, which is no longer 90 pounds, um, to put pressure to push that clay in the middle. And then my top hand is gonna tell it how high it is. Now with three and a half pounds, you'll notice um, I always cone up. I'm gonna review that really quick. I'm so busy telling my uh, beer chick story. So what is coning up? It's the same thing. I've got my elbow locked into my body. I'm gonna push between six and seven o'clock with the heel of my hand. I'm gonna take the four fingers on my right hand, elbow push down on my leg. It's not enough just to lean it on. You wanna really lock that elbow in. I'm gonna push between one and two with my fingers, not my palm, and the heel of my hand, two pressure points. As I start to push in with my wheel going super fast, the clay has nowhere else to go but up. And then I'm gonna to start to close my hands, get a little dry there, to create a cone. Now, very often you may get that volcano. I don't let that volcano close up. I usually leave it open and then I'll start to cone down with my pinky in that hole so it doesn't close up. Little quick secret, if it's a tiny short volcano, if it's maybe an inch from the top, I'll actually try to compress it from the bottom of that volcano up. And hopefully I have the ability to squeeze that air out, but I'm definitely gonna know when I start to cone down. Now, notice this is a cone. This is not a tall skyscraper in a uh, long rectangular shape. I still want it wider on the bottom. That's gonna allow me to start to push this clay down to make this start to go out. So as I start to cone down, what I've done is I've just taken this three and a half pounds and I've isolated it into small parts to center. So as I start to work, I'm gonna work just on the top. I'm gonna pretend that there's a bat right here. By coning up and down, you actually learn how to deal with a wobbly bat as well. Very often when we're dealing with a wobbly bat, we'll push down into the clay and we'll push into the bat and then the bat starts to wiggle. But if you practice sort of centering, floating above, the bat, then you won't let this affect you. That's a little pro tip for those in a community studio where the bats may not be at the best level. So as I start to cone down, notice I'm not using my entire hand. If I use my entire hand, this is the shape that you're gonna get dipping down. Now, if I get that shape and the clay starts to dip down, if I have to cone up again, I will undoubtedly get that volcano. So I wanna work with almost my first and second knuckle in the middle. I'm not really pushing down with my pinky because there's not much strength in the tip of our pinky, but I'm gonna start to push down, drop my wrist. See how it starts to get a little rounder there? It's still a little pointy up on the top. 
And as that clay starts to ooze out, this hand, my left hand, and my whole entire body is pushing that back in. And as I start to comb down more and more, my left hand is coming out a little bit, and that means my whole body is coming back a little, and my right hand is sort of pushing that clay in while my left hand collects it. And then once I get close to the bottom, most of this has been centered, but now I've got to deal with this bottom. Very often this becomes slip. I will literally just scrape that off. I always want a nice perpendicular angle here. I never want it to slope down like that. If you let it slope down like that, chances are when you start to pull, you're gonna leave that clay down on the back. So now I'm gonna go in here and just pretend that it's just one small piece of clay. And again, if your bat is wobbly, pull back that left hand a little. Don't rely so much on the bat. You wanna just sort of float above it and hang out right there. Now let's say your clay is not quite centered at this point usually not centered in the bottom. If I do a little bit of a small cone, not all the way up to a cone, and I push again, heel of my hand, and I push those sort of unruly parts that are hanging out down here into the clay, it will push those uneven parts to the top. Almost sort of like you're taking all these little rocks and those rocks are pushing these rocks up. Now your bottom is centered, and all you gotta do is kind of go right back into that steady position, just holding your hand still until all the clay grains start to listen to you. Now remember, we never take our hands off quickly. That will throw it off center. So again, once you feel it's centered, you wanna slowly remove those hands. How do you know it's centered? I usually draw a circle down here on the bat. That will give me an idea. Actually, instead of moving the camera, I'll just pick it up. See that brown circle that I caused there? If that circle looks like it's sort of just staying still, you don't really know that the wheel is moving, then you know that it's centered. But it's really important to have this part of your back clean when you start to pull. So now with three pounds of clay, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of a bigger tool. I'm gonna go in with two thumbs. Not only my two thumb pads, but I'm gonna use the stems of my thumb as well. Wheel going super fast, elbows pushed down on my legs. Now with three pounds of clay, my fingers may get dry halfway. So I'll slowly take my hands out add some water. Now you'll see a lot of people um, take their sponge and squeeze water on their clay. I don't really love that. I don't really get it because then all the water ends up on the bottom and it just sits there. So I don't, I don't really know why. I'd rather just keep my hands wet. Remember as you start to throw a pot you don't want to start adding a lot of water as you get more as your pot starts to grow because that will actually just slow the drying process. It may cause some cracking. So I don't, I don't love to just squeeze water on my pot. I don't, you know, prove me wrong. I don't know. All right, so now I'm gonna open up that floor. Now remember when we're opening up the cylinder, we want that floor to look like right angles. We don't want it to look like this because if it looks like this, then when we trim, chances are it's gonna be round on the outside and that's not quite a cylinder. So the way that I do that, I put two fingers inside, I pull towards the palm up, uh, towards the edge, and then I come out the way I went in. If I do this, you're gonna end up with it rounds like this, and chances are your top of your wall is gonna be a lot thinner just to start with, and that's gonna be complicated. So you'll see what I do. I'm gonna take three fingers, make them the same length, wheel going fast, go in that hole, pull towards my left palm, and remember, I'm doing this. I'm not doing this. When you do this, you're gonna throw it off center. So this is the tool, this whole thing right here. Now, how wide do you open up? I like to say that I open up the width of my mounds of clay. Some people open up super wider to overcompensate for the amount of pushing that you put on the outside that will cause it to go in. I like to bring the inside of my pot right to the edge of my mound of my clay. This will allow me to get under there so that this clay doesn't sit on the side here. But remember, I can't go wider than the mound of clay because my wall becomes my floor. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the inside of this. So a lot of people might have heard I'm very bad at size and distance, um, not my strong point. I kinda wanna stick to owning businesses and throwing pots. Um, so that's probably, I don't know, five or six inches wide, and that would be the outside would be about seven inches wide. 
So now, the first thing I do is what I call the corrective pull. As you pull, or as you start to throw your pot, you may notice very often as a beginner, your top is gonna be really thin, your bottom is gonna be really thick. So we wanna fix that with the first pull. I call it the corrective pull. I make my own shit up, sorry. So my very first pull, I wanna make the walls even so that I don't have to think about it later. And what I'm actually doing is I'm aiming for a volcano. I want both of my fingers to end up up here. That's gonna stop your clay from going, oh my God, we're gonna make a bowl, right? That whole feeling that your wheel has, that's centripetal force and we wanna fight against that. So very often I'll find a lot of my members or beginners will put a lot of pressure on their outside hand going towards the middle, but then their inside hand is still going up. That's gonna create a thin lip. We want both hands to travel up together. Now I always use a sponge. Sometimes I use the sponge and I touch the clay with my finger and I follow it with the sponge. Sometimes I make a finger taco. Whatever works for you. But that stops me from having to do that squeeze of the water. So I feel like gravity automatically makes the water go to the bottom. So again, this goes back to my whole, I don't agree with squeezing water on it, but whatever. Uh, Simon Leach has been to our studio. He literally will squeeze water on his fingers so that it goes to the side. I guess whatever works for you. So I've slowed down my wheel because again, we want the centripetal force. We want to have a little bit more control. I will slow down a little on the bottom and I will push that clay in because the bottom was thinner. And now I'm putting a lot more pressure where it's thicker. And now I'm actually faking the top of it because it was already the same thickness as the bottom. So now I have put no pressure where it was thin, a lot of pressure where it was thick, and less pressure where it was thin. Now I have an evenly consistent wall, so I don't have to think about it as I'm pulling. So I'm gonna scoop down here again. Now I always leave my foot on my pedal. After doing this for 30 years, yes, 30 years, I have found that my body has learned when to slow down and when to speed up. If I was to really try and teach that skill, I would say that when I wanna do a lot of work to something, when I wanna hit up that ring of clay more, I'll slow down my wheel. And then as I get to a point where I don't have to do as much, I'll actually speed up my wheel. I correlate this often to a record player. Um, you only wanna play one line of the song at a time. Sometimes you may wanna really hear that lyric, so you wanna hang out down there for a little while. Uh, go ahead and visualize that for a minute. So I'm going to start down on the bottom again. I'm going to scoop up. I'm going to start to go up. Now what's super important is very often sometimes you may find that you have created sort of a moat on the inside um, where right around the edge of your wall you have this little dip. That's usually because when you're waiting for this hand to meet this hand, this hand tends to be pushing down. We want to have that just sort of floating. It's a very easy fix. Just have it floating above the floor so that you're not eating away the clay. You're going to notice that as I start to pull, my outside hand is just a little lower than my inside hand. And that's literally because that's where it starts, right? This one starts here. This one starts about a half an inch to a quarter of an inch above. So they're always going to be a little different even when you come to the top. Notice that my right elbow always stays on my body. Notice that even when I can't touch this hand, I will eventually get to a point where this hand can flip over. This is much better than this. I'm gonna get on in here again. I'm gonna do a little bit of a scoop. I notice I slow down my wheel. Not sure if you can hear the sound of it. Again, I've got both of those hands. The finger comes out and I start to go up. So what you guys can't see is that when I'm pulling a cylinder, the top of my clay looks like the letter D. So if I pick this up, when I'm pushing, this pushes all the way in like that. And then the minute I take my hand off, this centripetal force will put it back to shape. That's what I'm talking about, how it'll always be round as long as you gently do stuff. So I'm gonna fix that just by sort of with the wheel moving. Let me get the water out of the inside. So what are we aiming for on thickness of wall? Well, that's really up to you. Um, I don't love thin, thin walls. Um, I break things very easily. So I'm about just consistency, and that's really what a perfect pot is. A lot of people may not know the aesthetics of what you're aiming for. You're basically aiming for, if I was to unravel this out flat, 
it should be evenly consistent all the way through. Okay, so you can may see I've got this little sort of indentation here. So I'm gonna show you guys how to collar real quick. I see a lot of people, they put one hand on one side, one on the other, and they just, with slow hands, they hold on to it. They think they're gonna get a full revolution, but they're not. Most important thing when you're collaring, whether it's with a six point collar, full hand collar, or just sort of, you know, around the neck collar, is that your hands are touching. This is one tool, this is two tools. When you're using two tools, one may slide up a little higher than the other, one may get dry and get stuck. Always have your hands attached. So I'm gonna do the six points, that's fingertips, knuckles on my middle finger, and my thumbs. They're down on the same plane. Now most important thing, this is a wet, throwing water on it sort of thing. Wet and fast and aggressive. Elbows down on your body, wait till you get to the top, and slowly take your hands off. I can't stress the importance of wet and fast. You may think that your brain is seeing a full revolution. It's not. Whether it's the matrix or this is all not real, who knows. But our brain does not see things when they actually happen. It takes a little while for our eyes and our brain to process. So you think by going slow, you're going to see that revolution. Not true. Um, you can't. So that's why you trim quickly and collar quickly. Basically, though, that's going to compress the clay. So when we collar, now this has gotten a little thicker. And I'm going to get another pull in here. So I slow down the wheel again. That's why I keep my foot on the pedal. Now, normally when you're throwing a pot, you wanna try not to talk and commentate in between because then your arm, this arm that has been down on your body when it was shorter, remembers the stability. So when you're not able to have both elbows on your body, this arm remembers. But if you sit and you talk, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe what my boyfriend did last night, my daughter did this. Your arm forgets that stability. So ideally, you wanna just keep pulling. You don't wanna, I mean, I'm not telling you not to socialize in your studio. We're actually open 24 hours, so I, I encourage socialization. But, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a final pull. I would have called it a final pull a while ago if I wasn't talking so much. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of a, um, of a mess up on this on purpose. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of a, of a dent. Now I wanna talk about how I straighten that dent out. In every basic pottery set that you buy on Alibaba or wherever else, it's gonna have this wooden, we call it a plate rib, uh, straight edge wooden tool. I don't know what you're gonna do. But I use this to straighten things out. Now you're gonna see a lot of people do this. I disagree with this, especially as a beginner. As a beginner, chances are your bottom is gonna be thicker than your top. And now you're treating your bottom for a fourth of an inch the same way you're treating your top. And I think that's a little too much. I always compare it to playing a record with a brush, right? So I like to use the side. And this hole is here for me to stick my finger in it. I think it's wonderful. And now, a lot of mistakes I'll see is you guys will just sort of, well, not you guys, sorry to accuse you. Um, you guys will actually just lean this up. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna draw the border of our pot with our tool and we wanna push the already evenly consistent wall into that border. Let's show you what I mean. So you're gonna see that I'm a little um, farther away from the pot here. And now I'm gonna go inside with a very wet hand and I'm gonna push that up against my tool. And now I'm not gonna follow the already existing profile of the pot. I'm gonna keep my tool going straight. Notice my right elbow is on my body. I'm gonna push that wall into the tool until the edge of my tool comes all the way off. Now, yes, it did take a little bit of clay off, but not where I was carving away a bumpy part. I was just taking that wiggly wall and I was straightening it out. I was I always visualize when you heat gun plastic to seal your windows. I, my brain goes all sorts of weird places. And then I'll go ahead, and that's really if you want. You know, I have some, I have a member who um, legitimately only likes very straight angular pots. And maybe this is what you're looking for. Um, for me, uh, I just like knowing that I can throw a straight pot. To me, that's sort of a skill thing. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of straighten out that, that lip a little bit. I'm gonna get the water out of the inside of my pot. 
Now the inside of your pot should still maintain that right angle. Very often we may lose that. And that's really because your inside hand sort of gives in a little to that outside hand. That outside hand is like putting so much pressure inside hand kind of goes, okay. And then you lose that five to six inches. You wanna make sure that inside hand is putting enough pressure to counteract what your outside hand is doing. This way you don't end up with sort of that tornado thing that happens. Again, very easy fix. So then how do I go ahead and get rid of um, my outside clay? I just bought this um, Sin or ice called Gem, but it turns out it's Sin, a uh, slightly advanced clay tool kit. And I got this tool. Um, it's a bit of a bigger version of the basic standard Alibaba set, um, but I like it for larger pots because larger pots need larger tools. I line that up, I hold it with two hands, elbows on my body, this hand is counter pressuring. I'm gonna line that right up with the side of my pot. I'm gonna drive it in and come out the way I went in. You're not just going and you don't wanna pull straight out. The reason why we don't wanna pull straight out is we wanna go ahead and take our pin tool. I'm gonna slide this with the wheel moving right underneath that loop of clay that was left over. Remember, if you have this angled up, that clay is gonna bounce back into your pot, so you want it as flush as you can. I'm gonna cut this. I'm gonna make this go away. Um, this is standard uh, 240 No G. Tends to be a little wetter than other clays, um, and therefore, I got a little bit of a messy edge there. Uh, I'm gonna go in there again. I, I kind of like throwing like, I think it's kind of close to, if you want to, start off with this before porcelain. Um, I think it's the way to go. Find it a little harder to trim. Um, it doesn't have the grog, so your tool kind of slides off. So you need a real sharp, um, a real sharp trimming tool, depending on what you're gonna do. So here you go. This is about a three and a half pound cylinder. Um, it is about six inches wide and I don't know. <laughs> Again, I don't have a ruler. Size and distance isn't my thing about seven inches. I'll measure it and put it down in the comments. So I hope that that helped. Um, I know real back to basics sort of pot. Um, I believe that you should perfect the cylinder, fight the wheels urge to make a bowl. And once you have controlled that, you can make anything with intention. So go ahead and um, wedge, throw, open, I don't know what my shirt says, and destroy and wedge again. Have a great day, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what ideas you may have for videos. I'm clearly running out of them if I'm doing a cylinder again. Have a good day.